What is the best filtration option for you? Well, in today's video, we're gonna be discussing two of the most common filter methods, especially for your smaller and mid-sized tanks, which is the hang on the back filter and the sponge filter. I'm gonna walk through the pros and cons of each filter type and do a bit of a comparison today. Each filter definitely has its own applications and reasons to use them, and we're gonna discuss that in depth today, so let's dive right in. So my brothers and I have done previous videos on aquarium filtration in general, and also the pros and cons of canister filters and sumps, and I'll leave that in the description below. A lot of my bigger display tanks will definitely lean towards canisters or sumps, and there are reasons for that if you wanna check out those videos. But for many of you, if you have a smaller tank or you wanna be more cost effective, or you just don't wanna deal with the plumbing of a sump or the cleaning of a canister filter, for instance, hang on the back and sponge filters are both great options, but they definitely have some clear pros and cons and we're gonna start with cost. So both hang on the backs and sponge filters are pretty cost effective, but sponge filters definitely wins in this category. Sponge filters are very cheap. All you need is one air pump, airline tubing, and the sponge filter, and you could also hook up multiple sponge filters and airline tubes to one air pump to further reduce the cost. It's a really good option, especially if you have multiple tanks, multiple small tanks, and maybe even a fish room. Hang on the backs will be a bit more expensive, but they won't be too bad and you may need less hang on the backs and sponge filters, but even if you have multiple sponge filters, they'll probably be less overall cost than the hang on the back. Just as an example, my favorite hang on the back is the Seachem Tidal, and that's currently around $65 for the 75 gallon version, whereas an air pump and maybe one or two sponge filters will likely be around $30 or half that cost, so it's a little more cost effective to go with sponge filters, and like I said, if you're doing a fish room with a lot of tanks, and you're not really caring about the aesthetics of those tanks, maybe they're breeding tanks, it is a really good option and very cost effective. One of the biggest considerations when you're looking into these filters is just the noise level. It's one of the main features that I look for in a filter. I absolutely hate to hear any type of buzzing or humming or lids rattling, anything like that. Hang on the backs are generally very quiet, especially if you find models that have a pump that's in the water Again, that's why I like the Seachem title. Hang on the backs can be noisy though if you neglect cleanings for a very long time or if evaporation causes your water level to drop. The flow out of the hang on the back will be very quiet most times if your water level is appropriate. One brand that does drive me a bit nuts is the Fluval AquaClear, which is a great and reliable filter. It might last you a long time but I've always had a problem with the lids rattling and just making way too much noise for my liking. But overall, hang on the back filters are very quiet, but in comparison, the sponge filters generally tend to make more noise. In my experience, the air pump itself is one of the main issues. Either the vibration from running them or the cheaper models start buzzing eventually. This air pump in my fish room is making a lot of noise, and even though it was a cheaper model, it started making noise after about a month. I'm actually gonna be replacing it with the aquarium co-op air pump very soon. And also when it comes to sponge filters, the bubbles can be very noisy when they're bursting at the surface. Many fish rooms I've visited had mostly sponge filters and they were super noisy. The same goes for a lot of local fish stores because they'll usually be running sponge filters to save on costs and just efficiency with so many tanks. But you'll likely hear that constant noise of bubbles breaking at the surface, which can be really noisy and in general, that's not what I would want in an aquarium, especially if it's my living area. So I would tend to lean towards the hang on the backs when it comes to noise. A good example is when I visited Cunningham Cichlids, who has a huge fish room with 94 aquariums in his basement, but he actually had quite a few hang on the back filters, more than I normally see in a fish room, and it was much quieter than I expected in there, and that was mostly because he had hang on the back filters, and it made the tanks look really nice as well. There are ways to modify sponge filters, airflow, and bubble sizes, but in general I would say it's still gonna be noisier than the hang on the back filter, and especially it will be much noisier than the good HOB filters that I'll discuss towards the end of the video. Another key consideration here is just the customization options for the hang on the back versus the sponge filter. Hang on the back filters have way more options when it comes to customization. You could put any type of filter media in a hang on the back. You could put different sponges, polyfill, filter floss, different types of bio media, and you could even do chemical filtration. I always love to do Kimi Pure Blue in some of my tanks, 
and you just couldn't really do that with a sponge filter. So I think it's really key to have that customization option with the hang on the back. When customizing the hang on the back, you could do things like adding mechanical filtration if you're noticing a lot of particles in your water column, or you could add differing sizes of sponges to catch the finest size debris. I would say hang on the back filters make it a little bit easier to maintain crystal clear water because you can customize the filtration media to your needs and to your tank. With a sponge filter, you're just kind of set with the mechanical filtration, and even though they do a pretty good job, sometimes I feel like the hang on the backs are just a little bit better in that regard. And then when it comes to the power and strength of these filters, I do think they're pretty similar. Hang on the backs might be able to do more gallons per hour, especially if you have a larger model, but it's really easy to add more sponge filters or bigger sponge filters to achieve the same thing. Of course, if you start adding a ton of sponge filters, you reduce the tank space, and kind of start cluttering your tank some. So if I had to choose here, hang on the backs would marginally win in the performance, power, and strength category. When it comes to setup, I think the sponge filter definitely wins this category. It's super easy. You just attach the airline tubing, stick it in your tank, and you're good to go. But the hang on the back, it's pretty simple as well but there are some options to customize it like we talked about. So if you are changing out the filter media, it's just something you wanna consider. But also when you're setting up the hang on the back, you have to consider the space behind your tank because it will be hanging off the back of your tank likely or on the side. And you just need to make sure you have clearance. Usually a couple inches is needed depending on the model of hang on the back. But for the sponge filter, you could have your tank in theory right against the back wall. But sponge filters are super easy to set up and hang on the backs aren't much harder. I would say both are much easier options than say a canister or a sump. You don't need any advanced skill or knowledge or do any plumbing. Another thing to consider is self priming, which is a huge issue when it comes to some hang on the back filters. Obviously your sponge filter will be in your tank. So if your power goes on or off, or if you plug in the sponge filter, it will start right back up. But some hang on the backs don't have the pump inside the water. And so they're not self priming. The Fluval AquaClear, not to pick on them again, but a lot of their models had the pump on the outside of the tank. So if you have a power outage, the power kicks back on, the filter won't start back up. You have to manually put water in the back of the filter just to kick it back on. I found that really annoying to be honest, especially when I'm doing water changes on a weekly basis and I have to fill up the back of the filter each time just to plug it back in. But luckily a lot of hang on the back filters have started implementing the technology of having the pump in the water which like I said reduces noise but also allows you to start up the filter when it's kicked on or plugged back in. And although I picked on the AquaClear a couple times it's still a very reliable filter. I'm going to discuss some of my favorite brands and models towards the end of the video but let's move on. So when it comes to cleaning both of these are very simple. I would say the sponge filter is probably the easiest to clean. You just rinse out the sponge and some tank water very quick and easy. You could be done with that in just under a minute, but you do have to get your hand wet and put your arm in the tank. So if that's something you don't want to be doing, then the hang on the back might be a little bit better. Most hang on the backs will have a compartment that you can just remove straight out of the filter, carry it over to your sink, and then rinse out the filter media. Again, using the Seekin title as an example, it has that compartment and you can actually flip the lid upside down and carry it like a tray so that you're not dripping any water over to your sink. You can rinse out your media very quickly, put it back in the compartment and then put it in the back of the filter without removing the whole casing of the filter. So it's super simple. Both are great, easy options, much easier than say a canister filter. Sumps are pretty easy to clean too, but I think hang on the backs and sponge filters win this category when it comes to cleaning both are really easy options. So maybe the most important comparison of these two filters is just the aesthetics and look in the aquarium. And I kept it kind of last on the list here just so that I wasn't clearly picking a favorite, but sponge filters are clearly visible in your tank. They do take up tank space. And to me, they just look really ugly. So in my big display tanks, I would probably never have a sponge filter. You can do things like hiding it behind a core but even if you're doing that, you're taking up tank space. And especially with cichlids, you need as much territory and hiding spots as possible in the tank. So that's a huge drawback for me. With the hang on the back, you can kind of hide it in the back corner. And with some of my tanks, like the discus tank, I have a hang on the back and you can't even really see it in the tank. So I think the aesthetics is a huge part of this and hang on the backs clearly win this category in my opinion. 
And also, this is a pretty subjective take, but I just don't personally love seeing air bubbles in my tank, whether that's an air pump or just a sponge filter with bubbles coming up. It just doesn't look natural to me, and I normally don't have those in my display tanks. But in, say, a breeding tank or my fish room where I'm not as concerned with the overall look of the tank, I'll definitely use sponge filters because it's just more cost effective and I'm not worrying about the look of the tank. But for most of my aquariums, they're set up to be display tanks, things that I sit in front of and watch all the time. And I'm also filming them for the channel, so I want them to look good. And in that regard, I'm probably never gonna have sponge filters in my big tanks. But for things like my breeding projects, I'll probably use sponge filters because they're cost effective. And the last section here is just some of my favorite brands when it comes to these filters. And I hesitated to even put these in here because people think I'm paid for, but these are my honest opinions and why I use them. Because if you select one brand of hang on the back filter compared to another, you're gonna have a very different experience. So here are a few of the hang on the backs that I really like. I've mentioned the Seachem title multiple times. I really like the pump in the water. I feel like it's really reliable and quiet. It's actually a CHA pump in the filter, which I really like. Also, it's really easy to hide. It looks good on the tank. It doesn't take up a ton of space behind the tank and the compartment is a good size as well. The Aqua Clear is another good option. It's very reliable, but it does have some drawbacks with the rattling lid and the self-priming pump. I also like a couple of the Marineland and Top Fin options. They're okay. I haven't tried the Awaze brands, but I've heard really good things. I would probably stay away from some that are sold at big box stores, like your Aquions or your Tetras. In general, those will be okay, but I found that they don't last quite as long or they might have some noise issues down the road. So just consider that if you're buying a cheap filter, you might have to replace it anyways. Maybe just spend that extra five or 10 bucks up front so that you don't have to replace that filter down the road and you can get something that you like from day one. And then when it comes to sponge filters, I think all of them will be just fine. There's not really a brand that sticks out to me. I guess Aquarium Co-op has one difference being a green inline tube, which can sometimes camouflage a little bit better in a planted tank, but it does the same thing that any other brand of sponge filter will do. So if you find a cheap one, go ahead and get that. I think you'll do just fine. But for sponge filters, I would consider getting a quality air pump so that you don't run into the noise issue like I currently have. So my final thoughts between these two filters is that I do lean more towards hang on the backs in most cases. I'm always trying to make my tanks look as good as possible, and so I don't want those sponge filters in my tanks most times. I'll usually lean towards the hang on the backs, even though sponge filters have a clear application, and I'll still be using them in my fish room with some of my smaller tanks, maybe breeding tanks, but in general, I'll lean towards hang on the backs, canisters, or even sumps. But if you'd like to see more information on just filtration in general, click this video here, or you can see this video, a breakdown of canisters versus sumps. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.